In this lesson, you will learn how to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators with the help of using some models. Let's take a look at the word problem I have written down below. Sam is making butter cookies and chocolate cookies for a party. He needs three-fourths of a cup of sugar for one batch of chocolate cookies and one-third of a cup of sugar for one batch of butter cookies. We're going to answer two different questions. The first question is, how much sugar does he need in all? The second question is, how much more sugar does he need for the chocolate cookies? So let's start with the first part here. We want to know how much sugar does he need in all? And to get started, what I'm going to do is highlight the important part of this problem. So we can see here that it says he needs three-fourths of a cup for one batch of chocolate cookies. So let's highlight the chocolate cookie information in yellow. And then we're going to highlight the other information in blue. So he needs one-third of a cup of sugar for one batch of butter cookies. So three-fourths for the chocolate cookies and one-third for the butter cookies. Now if we want to know how much sugar he needs in all, which is the first question here, we would use addition. So you would have three-fourths of a cup from the chocolate uh, cookie recipe plus the one-third of a cup of sugar for the butter cookie recipe. As you can notice here, these fractions are not like fractions because they have different denominators. So to find the sum, we need to think about how we can add these two fractions and we need to make them like fractions first. Before we get started finding the exact answer, what we're going to do is estimate by trying to figure out between which two numbers our answer will fall. And to do this estimation, we're going to use a number line. Taking a look at the number line, you can see here that the first add end of 3 fourths is listed right on the number line. So we know exactly where that number falls. Now we need to think about 1 third. And we're going to use benchmarks to think about the position of 1 third on this number line. So 1 fourth is less than 1 third, which means that 1 third will fall somewhere to the right of 1 fourth on the number line. The next benchmark we have here is 2 fourths. Now 2 fourths is greater than 1 third. So that means 1 third will fall somewhere to the left of 2 fourths. And that means that 1 third falls somewhere in between these two benchmarks. We don't know exactly where. But we can get an estimate of our overall answer for this addition problem. So we already have 3 fourths, right? And we know that the low estimate of where 1 third would fall would be 1 fourth. Because we know that 1 fourth is less than one third. So we can find this sum and we know that this is lower than what we expect to get when we get the exact answer. So 3 fourths plus 1 fourth is 4 fourths and this can be simplified down to 1. So the low estimate would be that he needs one cup of sugar in all. Now let's do the upper estimate. The upper estimate we're going to use the higher benchmark because we know that 1 third is less than 2 fourths. So we have 3 fourths plus 2 fourths, and this is going to be a high estimate, right? 3 fourths plus 2 fourths is 5 fourths, and this can be simplified to 1 and 1 fourth cups. So this is high, and that means our answer is going to fall somewhere in between these two values. So we're going to have somewhere in between 1 and 1 and a quarter cups for both recipes in all. So now let's go ahead and find the exact answer. And what I'm going to do is pull this page down so we can make some space. So we still have all the important information. And let's take a look at a model. So what we want to do is have a model for 3 fourths plus 1 third. So now we need to make these fractions like fractions, which means that we need to take the whole and make sure that each whole has the same number of equal parts. So let's see a model for that. So in this model, what we've done is we've taken each whole and divided it into 12 equal parts. Well, if you look at the model on the left here, the yellow lines show you the twelfths. Now you can count and see how many twelfths are filled in and we'll get a new fraction. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine of the twelfths are filled in and you can see here that there are 12, uh, sorry, 12 parts. So 9 out of the 12 would give us 9 twelfths plus, now this model was made, originally if you recall it had 3 equal parts as shown by the black lines. But then what you do is you divide each of those parts into 4 parts. So this quadruples the number of parts there are in this whole and there will also be 12. 
four out of the 12 equal parts are being used. Now let's take a look at one more model that will show us the sum. What we need to do is add the equal parts from the first model to the parts shown here in green on the second model. So now what you want to do is go ahead and count how many parts are now green. And this is still out of twelfths, right? Because each hole here in the sum has twelve parts. So let's count. So the sum of these two add-ins here on the left is 13 twelfths. Now you can rewrite this as 1 and 1 twelfth. So that means that the total amount of sugar required for both types of cookies is 1 and a twelfth cups. Now 1 and a twelfth falls in between the two numbers that we estimated. We said the low end would be 1 cup. The high end would be one and one-fourth cups. So one and one-twelfth falls in between here. So we had a pretty good idea of where the answer would fall. And then we found the exact answer using the help of some models. Now let's get rid of all of this uh, work that we've done and we'll move on to question number two. Question number two here says, how much more sugar does he need for the chocolate cookies? Now remember, it takes him three quarters of a cup for the chocolate cookies and one third of a cup for the butter cookies. So to find how much more sugar he needs, we would use division. So you have three fourths minus uh, one third, and that will give us some value. And we want to know how much more sugar, and that's what this subtraction sentence will give us. Now let's find the range that we think the answer is going to fall in between. Now we can use the number line for this again. Recall here's 3 fourths and then if you recall we know that 1 third is greater than 1 fourth but less than 2 fourths. So we're going to use the benchmark values of 1 fourth and 2 fourths to help us get the range of the difference in this subtraction problem. So let's find one value of the estimate or one of the values. So 3 fourths minus 1 fourth when you do the subtraction here, 3 fourths minus 1 fourth gives you 2 fourths, and this fraction can be simplified to the fraction 1 half. So part of the range includes the value 1 half cup difference, so he would need a half a cup more sugar for the chocolate cookies. And the other value would be 3 fourths minus 2 fourths, and when you do the subtraction here, you get 1 fourth. So one half is greater than one fourth. So at most, he needs a half a cup more sugar for the chocolate cookies. And at minimum, he would need one fourth of a cup more sugar for the chocolate cookies. So now let's use models to go in and find the exact answer. Now, if you recall from the first part of the problem, we know that we can make three fourths and one third like fractions by making them out of 12 equal parts. So I'm going to show you a model that represents 3 fourths and 1 third out of 12 equal parts. So here we have the model showing 3 fourths minus 1 third and what we've done is taken the model and divided it up into 12 equal parts. Now we can count. If you count the first model, 9 of the 12 parts are green and if you count in the second model, 4 out of the 12 parts are green. So what we're looking at here is 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths. And what you can do to have this subtraction is you can go into the first model here and cross off four equal parts, right? And then we count how much is left. This is the same thing as subtracting these four equal parts away, right? And we've crossed them off of the total here, 9 twelfths. So if we count what's left, we will find the difference of 9 twelfths and 4 twelfths. So let's count five parts left, which means the difference here is five twelfths. And let's just take a look at that with a model as well. And so let's just go in and count. There are five parts shaded in and there are twelve parts in this hole. So we got the correct answer, five twelfths. And I just want to draw your attention to the fact that five twelfths does fall in between these two values because six twelfths would be a half, right? And the half was the greatest estimate that we had, that he would need a half a cup more sugar. And 5 twelfths is just below that, so we had a pretty good idea where our answer would fall, and we did find the exact answer using the models. I hope that this makes solving problems a little bit easier for you when you have to add and subtract unlike fractions. Thanks for watching.